Hey, what's good, you guys? Hey, it's Rico Ramirez here with a new edition of What Went Wrong. And this week in the hot seat of What Went Wrong, we have Marvel's Secret Invasion. I, I must say, as much as I love Marvel and I hold Marvel near and dear to my heart, guys, I was highly disappointed with this project. I mean, I don't even know where to start. I thought it was just me for a minute that had a problem with it until I went online and I seen all the other reviews. So it's like, let's get into it. What went wrong with Marvel's Secret Invasion? First of all, let's talk about Nick Fury. Nick Fury is having the worst case of PTSD, and he needs to seek counseling. But instead of them having Nick Fury call the Avengers or even just one Avenger or two Avengers, they have Nick Fury taking on the full responsibility of this global mission. And it's really a Avengers level threat, if you ask me. If you know like I know, Nick Fury has every reason to have PTSD because he spent five years blurted out doing the Thanos snap. Then what I don't understand, Nick Fury, as soon as he got back from the snap, he went right to work, guys. This, this show takes place years after the blurt. And for some reason, they sent Nick, Nick Fury to space to work on some type of weapon. They never quite got into what t what type of weapon it was. So that's something like, I guess they just wanted to leave like a couple breadcrumbs. Because of course, you know, it's Marvel. So you know, it's, it's definitely building up to, you know, the long story because they're getting ready for the Avengers Secret, Secret Wars. But at this point, are we still going to be excited about Secret Wars? Because last time I checked, the latest release date on Avengers Secret Wars was 2026. So by the time Avengers Secret Wars come out, my daughter will be coming out of college, guys. And I'm so excited. And, you know, uh, of course, we're, we're all still going to watch it. We're all still going to watch it. But... I'm getting off track. That's the first thing that what went wrong with this. Nick Fury was suffering way too heavy to take on this type of task by himself. They could have at least made it more entertaining if they would have just called in just not even Thor, probably uh, Ant-Man. Like, you telling me Ant-Man was too busy for this? Scott was too busy for this. I know Scott was not too busy for this. Spider-Man, uh, they they probably didn't want to spend the budget on Spider-Man. But I feel like Nick Cannon seriously should have had, I mean, Nick Fury seriously should have had some help with this, guys. Another thing that went wrong with this, they spent the whole series reminding us how old Nick Fury was. Every five minutes. Nick Fury, he old. He's not the man he used to be. We know this. We are aware. We're trying to figure out why the writers didn't know this. It seems like all the characters knew this, but the writers didn't. It's a, it's a disconnect somewhere. I just don't know where it is, but Nick Fury was definitely way too old for that mission. Come on, man. This is not the same Nick Fury we got introduced to in the first Avengers. This is not the Nick, oh, hold on. We got introduced to Nick Fury in the first Iron Man, or was it the second Iron Man? You, wh Whichever one it was, it's not that guy. No, it's not that guy. So they basically spent six episodes telling Nick Fury he couldn't cut it anymore. Then, to add insult to injury, they had Nick Fury being fired by Rhodey, saying he's incompetent and can't do his job. And I was kind of scratching my head on that one because Rhodey was acting kind of like not Rhodey. But then, come to find out, Rhodey hasn't been Rhodey in a long time. I gotta say, like, the writers, 
I kind of like the direction they were going with that because nobody would have saw that coming. And apparently, they saying Rhodey has been replaced by a scroll since Civil War. I feel like that was that was some good writing right there. You know, that was like the Marvel we expect. You know, and it made sense because if you recap and go back to Civil War when Rhodey was sliding into the MRI machine, he had on the same gown that he had on when they released him and saved him from the scroll prison. So that made sense. I like that. So I will I will give the writers a little credit for that. I'll give the writers a little credit for that. I like that. I like that. Am I the only one that noticed that the scroll was a female? Am I the only one that noticed that? Agent Ross has also been a scroll. We don't know how long. The thing about that is we don't care. Did you care when you found out that Agent Ross was a scroll? This is another thing that I really had a problem with. Not necessarily had a problem with, but I feel like they... They was trying to get us invested too much in this. Like, do we really care that Nick Fury has a love life? We got 10 plus years of Nick Fury just being, you know, Nick Fury and just being very strategic and always sure of himself. And next thing you know, bam, you want to tell us Nick Fury has been married to a scroll since the 90s. So now... We have this action-packed show that we've been waiting on. It then went from Secret Invasion to Sleepless in Seattle within a couple episodes. Like, come on, man. Then it kind of started turning into Mr. and Mrs. Smith because on one of the episodes, they was getting ready to kill each other. So I'm like, okay, the writers, I don't know, are they getting desperate or just getting bored? I don't know. I, I can't really say, but they definitely need to bring in some new blood, man, into the writer's room. Like, anybody. Like, they could have got, like, one of the interns that was picking up donuts and coffee that day to just say, hey, intern, come do a couple pages. I'm quite sure the interns would have loved that. And it probably would have been a piece of work that all of us would have loved and we never would have knew that it was an intern, but we would have knew it was a difference because this this writing is ridiculous, man. Like, Marvel has always been known for its great writing and its storytelling. The past, ever since Avengers Endgame, it feel like it had the writing has peaked. It peaked right when, right when Tony Stark snapped his fingers. The writing went out right with that snap. It was like, he said, I'm Iron Man, snap. Then, like, all the good writing just left the building, man. Like, yeah, so we don't care about Nick Fury's love life, like, at all. Stop trying to make us care about these things. I tried so hard to like this show, guys. I mean, in my heart of hearts, the first episode, second episode, I was like, okay. Like that, what it was going. Then we get to the final episode, the very little character development that they did have with Gaia just went out the window. They gave Gaia every ability from every superhero in the MCU in one scene. And it had to be the most ridiculous piece of work that I ever seen from Marvel. Like, at that point, it made me wonder, like, do these guys even want to work there? Do they even want to be there? You know how you hate a job so much and you just go do the bare minimum because you don't even care no more? Like, I'm wondering, is that the case? If that the case, you y'all just you just need to leave the building. Just just leave, just leave. Because come on, man, I would have been cool with her getting abilities. That would have been cool. But y'all, they gave her every ability you can think of. I think I saw the Mantis antennas. They had group powers, man. Yes, group. The tree. They had group powers. They had Hulk power. Like, 
Come on. Anybody you could think of, they had their powers, man. And Nick was just, at that point, I was wondering, like, I was starting to question everything at that point. Like, where are these next episodes going, man? Where, are the, where, where, where is the future of the MCU? Luckily, we got Loki Season 2 getting ready to come out. Hopefully, Loki Season 2 will restore the feeling of the Marvel that we grown to love. I got a good feeling about Loki. I seen the trailer. I'm excited about Loki. I can't lie. Overall, I had to give this show a 2.5 out of 5 stars. And that's being generous. And that's because of the cinematography was just so great, you know. Um, I want to say it lost it lost momentum probably after the first episode. A after the first episode, we were just really just watching out of respect. That's it. So, yeah, definitely 2.5, man. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video. Like and subscribe. Comment. Let me know what you feel like went wrong with this show. And let me know. How do you feel about the future of the MCU? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, guys, I'm gone. Thanks for watching.